most out of what I've had. And even when things were tough, I always found a way to put food on the table. Even if that meant selling more than just a warm bed in the inn. I never thought of prostitution as something that I chose. This was just something I had to do to provide for those that I love. And I see the way the other women look at me. They have looked at me like that my entire life. There's no place for a woman like me among the righteous and the influential. I live on the edge of society, literally. My house is built into the outermost wall of the city, Jericho's red light district, you might say. I guess it would be the first to go if we were ever attacked. For so long, I have waited for something to change. For somebody to see me as valuable, not just another body for hire. And I had almost given up hope. Until one day, opportunity literally came knocking at my door. You see, the only people that came to see me were the nameless and the faceless. Then these two men showed up on my doorstep. They were no different. They hung their heads real low, and it was obvious that they didn't want to be recognized. And I could see why. They were Israelites. You see, a huge army had just set up camp across the river a few days ago, and all of Jericho was talking about that. We had heard about their God, Yahweh, who rained down fire from heaven. Jericho shook with fear that that unstoppable army right outside our gates. And I had two of their spies right on my doorstep looking for a place to hide. None of our gods or idols had ever done anything for me, but maybe their Yahweh could. So I stepped aside and I let them in. But anybody could have seen me talking to them. In fact, there was a woman pointing to my house and talking to the guard outside. If I was caught with Israelite spies, that would be it for me. But if Yahweh really could make a path of dry land through the river, through the Red Sea, maybe he could make a way for me. So I shut the door real quick and I peered out the window. I saw that woman pointing to my house again. I rushed through the house and up onto the roof, but there was no place to hide. So I just had the men lay down and I covered them with flags. And no sooner did they disappear underneath those bushels than I heard a knock on the door. So I ran down there, half shaking with excitement and half shaking with fear. I took a breath to steady myself and then I opened the door. It was the king of Jericho's personal guard Oh, he must have been more scared than I even thought. What can I do for you boys? Oh, but they were all business. Bring out the two men that came into your house, for they are foreign spies. They knew there was no turning back now. I had to lie to the most powerful man in the city. Lucky for me, that was something I was pretty good at. So I looked him straight in the eye and I said, yes, I think I know the men you were talking about, but I didn't know they were spies. <clears throat> well, they weren't buying it, so I had to get creative. Okay, okay, I said, I did see that. But they ran out the gate right before it closed and maybe if you hurry, you can catch them. And to my surprise, they turned around and ran after them. It was the first time in my life that I had ever lied and felt like I was doing the right thing. They had bought my answers, and now it was time for me to get some answers from those Israelites. You see, Israel, Israel had a huge army less than 10 miles away, and they were already sending in spies. That could only mean one thing. Jericho's walls would fall, just like every other city that had stood before them. Jericho's walls would not keep out Yahweh. Everybody else may have been content to cling to their idols and their gods, but I, I saw something real in Yahweh. He wasn't just made of stone or carved in wood. He was the one true living God that saved Israel over and over again. And now I wanted him to save me. And it couldn't hurt that I had two of his spies upstairs hiding. 
So I went up there and they came out as they heard me approaching. I know the Lord has given you this land. There is fear in Jericho like I have never seen. Even the king is on edge. We have heard how your God made a path of dry land through the Red Sea and eliminated the Amorite kings to the east. Your God is the one true God, the God of heaven above and the God of earth below. They were pretty surprised that I knew so much about their God. Here I was pleading with two strangers, please, please show me and my family kindness as I have shown you kindness. I was desperate. So I made them swear. Swear by your God. That was my ridiculous plea. These men were Israelites. I was a Canaanite Canaanite woman and a prostitute, no less. So I knew that I was probably the last person on earth that Yahweh would want to save. So I held my breath and I waited for their answer. Our lives for yours. If you don't tell what we are doing, We will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. This oath that you made us swear by will not be binding till we enter the land unless you tie this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down and unless you bring your mother, father, brothers, sisters, your entire family into your house. If anyone goes outside your house onto the street His blood will be on his own head. We will not be responsible. And anyone who is in your house, his blood will be on our head if a hand is laid upon him. But if you tell what we are doing, we will be released from the oath you made us swear. Agreed. Let it be as you have said. Remember the scarlet cord. We went out into the hills and stayed there three days. Then we came down out of the hills, forded the river, and came to Joshua and told him everything that had happened to us. And we said to Joshua, Surely the Lord has given us the land this day, for all the people are melting in fear because of us. Over the next few days, Joshua's, Jericho's walls were shut tight. No one could come in and no one could go out. Lookouts were posted everywhere and the soldiers were preparing for battle. Yahweh's army came marching in, not just with soldiers, but with priests and with trumpets. And they marched around our city for six days, blowing those trumpets like they had already won. Not a sword was unsheathed, and not an arrow was fired. Just marching and trumpets. And then on the seventh day, they marched around our city seven times, followed by a loud trumpet blast and shouting, And Yahweh answered their shouts, and Jericho's walls fell. But not my portion of the wall. We were saved. This scarlet cord represented the most important gift that I have ever received. It represented I used to think that all I could do was make the most out of what I had. But God wanted to make something more of me. He saved me. I put my faith in Yahweh, 
and he saved me. And who knows, maybe he can use my small part of the story to save someone else. I would like to give a big thank you to Mark Nelson for writing that uh, short drama and to Emily and Lauren for being wonderful characters in it. So ladies, we plan outfits. We put a lot of thought into planning our outfits, right? We plan them um, around the weather. We plan them around like our favorite pair of shoes or a new pair of shoes. We'll, we'll plan the whole outfit around that. Um, we might even get like new earrings and plan an outfit around it. I never remember to plan my outfit around the microphone. I never, ever remember to wear something with a waistband. <sighs> so good morning. My name is Christine Lippert and I am the director of children's ministry here at Troy United Methodist Church. I co-lead Grief Share with Pastor Dan Perry and it is actually my third year of seminary. Um, so Pastor Andy uh, entrusts me to preach here and at St. Jacob occasionally. So I thank you um, to him for trusting me and to you. Uh, so friends, please join me in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, by your Holy Spirit, you have revealed to us the gospel of your Son, Christ Jesus. Awaken our hearts that we may sincerely receive your word and not make light of it or hear it without fruit, as did your people long ago. Instead, lead us to fear you and daily grow in faith in your mercy. And finally, through your Son, Jesus Christ, obtain eternal salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one true God, now and forever. Amen. So the, for the past few months, you have heard, read, and discerned our way through the book of Hebrews. Pastor Andy and other ministers of our church have talked of the many greats of the Bible. In fact, in Hebrews 11.31, many of them are listed on the great wall of faith. It makes sense that men like Noah and Abraham and Joseph and Moses are listed as heroes of faith. But the woman you heard about earlier today was also on this list for her great faith and actions. And she is a very unlikely hero. In fact, an unlikely character to be chosen by God to be part of any great plan. But we will hear more about her soon. Last week, our Minister of Modern Worship Arts, Tim Price, told wonderful stories from his own life, the life of our church, and of Abraham and Sarah. He illustrated how Abraham and Sarah had great faith to leave their country, their people, and to have great faith in God. They had faith at a very old age to become a father of many nations when they had yet to bear their own children. We move forward today in biblical times to the people of Moses, who Moses helped escape Egypt, and they're continuing their journey with Joshua to the Promised Land. So Joshua and his army have approached Jericho, We've all heard the song on Joy FM, Jericho Walls. Uh, even though God was on Joshua's side and had proven time and again to win the battles for him, Joshua still sent two spies ahead of the army to scope things out in Jericho. And this is where our story shifts to Rahab, who, as the story unfolds, displays the initiative, resolve, cunning, and faith required for occupying the land. Her hospitality is the first act of the Canaanite. The two spies chose her home and her door on which to knock. For two spies to lodge in the home of Rahab made sense. Her house was part of the city wall and it was constantly frequented by foreigners, giving the men a greater opportunity to blend in. Now, why would her home be frequented by many men? Some Bible translations call her a harlot. Some say she was a prostitute. The others say she was an innkeeper that went the extra mile with hospitality. So yes, the spy's best chance of blending in would have been with Rahab. Even before the arrival of the spies, word had spread in Jericho about God's miraculous work in freeing the Hebrews from Egypt decades earlier. 
The city knew Joshua and his forces were approaching and they were overcome with fear by what they'd heard about this Hebrew God. And when the two spies came to Rahab's door, we can only imagine what went through her mind. As a prostitute, she was used to receiving male visitors to her home. Um, but these men, well, they're enemies and they're threatening her people. Yet Rahab chose to hide them. Rahab notices the town's busybody already talking to the kin's guard about the men that had entered her home. So Rahab races the spies onto her roof and covers them with flax to hide them. And she was just in time as the king's guard was already knocking on her door, inquiring about the spies. Rahab lies in order to keep them safe. And in fact, she's so cunning. She sends the guard out of the town gate in the wrong direction. To chase after the men, she claims ran into the mountains. And when the guard left, Rahab went to the spies. Why would she hide them and lie for them? It is here that Rahab confesses. I know that the Lord has given you the land and that dread of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land melt in fear for you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard it, our hearts melted and there was no courage left in any of us because of you. The Lord, your God, is indeed God in heaven above and earth below. Rahab's profession of faith was remarkable. She was a woman in a pagan city with a pagan background. The reports she had probably heard from men who came to her establishment, along with a few facts she knew herself, and that led her to believe that the one who had done marvelous wonders on behalf of his people was true. God in his grace reaches out to those with sordid past and no history with him. Genuine faith can take root in the unlikeliest of soils as it did in the heart of this pagan prostitute Rahab. Having heard how God destroyed kings who opposed God and miraculously delivered the people, Rahab believes and embraces God as supreme. I know that the Lord has given you this land, she said. He is God in heaven above and earth beneath. Her declaration is more than mere words. It is an act of worship to the Almighty. But Rahab is about to experience the greatest wonder of all, God's limitless love and power to save the most unlikeliest of persons. God is able to save the uttermost those who trust in God. Before Rahab helps the spies escape, she negotiates for her family's safety from the impending attack on Jericho. She says, now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I've shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters and all who belong to them and that you will save us from death. Now, it sounds like Rahab is making a covenant by saying, please swear and give me a sign, because this would signify loyalty. And the words show kindness refer to future generations. By showing kindness to the household of her father, that would include future generations, and that would include Jesus Christ. The spies swear to save Rahab and her family's lives in exchange for their own but with a condition. You all received a scarlet cord on your way in, and if yours is like mine, it's fallen off three times already. But if you'll have that in your hand and be mindful of it during this next part of the sermon. She lowers the spies down over the Jericho wall using the scarlet cord. And after she instructs them how to flee, hide, and for how long, she ties the scarlet cord in the window. The scarlet cord that saved the two men would save her and her family. It had great meaning. It meant Rahab had faith in the men of God, and it was a sign of her faith in the Lord God of Israel. Put outside the window for Joshua and his men to see, it was the mark of one to be saved on the day of calamity. Friends, its color represents the blood of sacrifice. It symbolizes redemption. Rahab, she took initiative, she had resolve, she was cunning, and she had faith. Rahab could have captured the spies in her house. She could have betrayed them. She could have turned them over to the king and gained his favor. But instead, she arranged the spies' hiding place. 
organized a doom pursuit of her kinsmen, time to lock them out, instructed the Israelites when, where, and how long to flee, and negotiated for her and her family's safety. When Joshua entered the city of Jericho, he respected the promise that was made to Rahab by the spies. With the scarlet cord of redemption in the window, the two men were told by Joshua to go to the harlot's house and save her and her kindred. Rahab and her family were saved miraculously by the power and sovereign will of God. She was saved alive and saved to live. God honored her by keeping her and her entire family safe. Rahab backed these spies because of a basic faith that the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and earth below. Because of her actions, Rahab is named alongside heroes of faith like Noah, Abraham, Joseph, and Moses in Hebrews 11.31. And in James chapter 2, verse 25, it cites her faith-driven choice as an example of righteousness. It reads, In the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. But in that initial moment when we see her standing on the roof, looking down at the spies, hiding under her bundles of flax, she doesn't look like a typical, typical hero, does she? Courageous, yes, but a hero? Yet Rahab shows us, shows us that belief in God involves courage and faith. It asks us to risk, to give, to sacrifice, to sacrifice beyond a point that is uncomfortable. Rahab chose the spy's safety and well-being over her own. She picked their needs over her own allegiances. She chose their God over her king, even though it could have cost her everything. Rahab served and saved, and in the end, the people of Israel served and saved her. Rahab's faith was a saving faith, and she became the wife of Solomon from the tribe of Judah. We don't know, maybe he was even one of the spies that came knocking on her door. Rahab and Solomon were the parents of Boaz. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of David, King David. And in Matthew 1.5, we know this to be the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah. Rahab's faith gave her a place in the great hall of faith. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. Rahab perished not with them that believed not. And the secret of her safety and security can be found in the first two words, by faith. What Rahab did for the spies was faith and practice. She believed with her heart, confessed with her mouth, and acted at the risk of her own life. Rahab could not see, but the substance was in her heart. What Rahab was is not as important as what she became. Friends, we're all sinners. But like Rahab, we have believed and been saved by the grace from our Lord, Jesus Christ. Please join me in prayer. O most loving Father, you want us to give thanks for all things, to dread nothing but losing you, and to cast all our anxiety on you because you care for us. Preserve us from faithless fears and worldly anxieties, and grant that no clouds of this mortal life may hide from us the light of that love which is immortal and which you have shown us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.